Hey everybody, it is Matthew of Mr. Domestic. Yay, I have my channel back. And I know for a lot of you out there, you're gonna be like jumping for joy and super excited. And I do have that inside of me, but I also have a lot of other emotions that I can finally process now that I've gotten the channel back. There's some more work that needs to be done to it to get it back where it was before. But I wanted to capture everything that happened on video to share with you and then everything that I needed to do in order to get my channel back while it's still still fresh in my mind. That way it can help any of you either understand what happened and or know what to do if this ever does happen to you because honestly it shouldn't have been this hard. So if that's what you're here for then stick around for a story that is like no other I ever want to tell again <laughs> but this is my story and part of my journey with YouTube and like I do everything else I'm going to share it with all of you. So first off I have a blog documenting all of this. It's in the link in the description here part of what helped me get my channel back was documenting everything in the blog but let's start from the beginning so I'm telling you about the blog because I might get some of the details wrong and if so don't read me it's not intentional it's all on the blog um, but I think it was November 5th I got a phishing email like we all get phishing emails all the time some do and some do not know what to look for I know what to look for I just had a brain fart like for 30 seconds and I clicked on it and I'll put it on the screenshot here but it said something to the degree of if you have a spammy video or you have too many spammy videos on your channel you need to delete it or within 24 hours we're going to cancel your channel something like that and I had just posted something that was showing what was going to happen on another video that I had on another platform so I was like oh wow I need to remove that and that was my initial thought I was about to head on a plane to do something for my day job and so I logged in really quick on the email gave them my credentials and then immediately noticed that I was being fished because it was toggling and it wasn't going to the next thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I went back to the original email. Yes, it indeed was a phishing email. You can tell, like if you don't know, first thing to do if you ever get an email like that is go to check from the send and you'll, you'll know if it's a real address. This one, it clearly wasn't. And then sometimes where in an official YouTube email if i click on the youtube it will take me to a url but i clicked on it in this email and it was a, a jpeg so i knew that it was phishing i just didn't look and in that time i had given my username my password and then i after 30 seconds realized that i was being fished and so i went into youtube i contacted my assistant jennifer hi jennifer and she changed all my passwords everywhere. She changed my YouTube password on her computer just to make sure it was a different computer. And then everything was done. I thought it was over, Phew. crisis averted, nothing happened. I went and I saw that I had a, a log in on my YouTube from Finland. Don't know where that came from, but I thought I caught it in time and nothing would happen. Then the next day I get this weird email. It was an official email from YouTube saying, that the ownership of the Mr. Domestic channel was added, then the ownership of the Mr. Domestic channel was removed from my email address. And I was like, what? What is this? I didn't know anything about ownership. Basically, if you wanna sell your channel, there's a way to switch ownership and give it to someone else. Didn't know about that either. So I went in, looked it up on YouTube and Google, and there's a way to recover your account and that's what I thought I was doing and I thought I had recovered it, but that's not for this because in this instance, my account was both hijacked and hacked. It wasn't just hacked. So by them removing me as the owner of it, essentially they took over ownership so my email was no longer associated with that account and there was no way for me to get back into it. So that is what happened to me losing my account. Didn't understand the gravity of it until much later in the day when I investigated it and discovered that I couldn't get into my channel, things started happening. The first thing was the graphic on top, the header graphic was removed and something else was up. And um, before I noticed that I had gotten into chat, somehow I found a way to chat with people on YouTube on creator support. I couldn't find it again and it took me like an hour and a half to find it because honestly I didn't know what to do. 
but I luckily chatted with someone who sent me an email with all of this different information to send them and I did it and at this point I was just trusting they were gonna handle it things are going to happen it was gonna move forward I was patient I was like yay I finally got in contact with someone so I would check in every so often and then different people would pop in with different names basically saying the same thing it's gonna take time for a fair process they have to do a thorough investigation etc etc and then finally I got an email and I don't remember what day it was but I got an email and this was the email that changed everything from my patients. And my goodness was that it said that after a thorough investigation, they found no wrongdoing with my account and in the future to do better with protecting my passwords. And I was like, what? Is this a joke? This Because I was documenting as things were happening to my account, everything that changed whenever the header was gone, whenever they started removing my videos, whenever they started deleting my videos, once they like changed the name to Christina Jones, once they started um, sending out information that was political disinformation about a specific political party that they were using as a thumbnail in my premieres. For those of you who are YouTubers know what I'm talking about. They were sending that out probably every hour with something new to my subscribers that hit the notification bell button. And they were forced to see that. And then they were live streaming Fox News and Sean Hannity stuff. I have the receipts. I'm not making any of this up. I've got lots of documentation. I'll put it somewhere in the video. It's in my blog post. But I documented all of this. I even had the original URL, which was changed. And for them to come back and tell me that nothing had happened, I was like, I call BS on this. And then it's not that the kindness went away, but I was really firm. And I was like, this has to be a joke. There's no way I gave you all of the information. I have a super successful DIY business that, that YouTube is the hub of it. I'm losing thousands of dollars in revenue. As this is happening, I gave you all the information and you're telling me that nothing happened? BS, you need to find my channel, it needs to happen. And that was whenever it finally hit me and the grief process started that I might not get my channel back. And I was like, I have to take things into my own hands because I can't trust this is gonna happen. I didn't really feel like I was talking to a person anymore. I'm still not sure it felt like artificial intelligence because of the insensitivity of some of their comments. But from there, I was, I didn't realize I was ugly crying as much as I was, but let me just post it here so you can see what I put on Instagram stories to ask people for help. I've, I've reached my limit with all of this YouTube stuff. I just published a blog and my heart is broken and I need your help. I feel like Laura Lee, the makeup guru. I'm sorry. I can't stop crying. But I need your help. Please go read it and share it. Oh! <laughs> like, I didn't realize it was this bad, but I didn't know what to do. I asked for help. I put it on Instagram stories. Luckily, as I've always told people who I mentor, anyone who listens, is I don't put all my eggs in one basket when it comes to social media. I'm active on all of my social media. Um, some are, are more successful than others, but I don't. I don't just focus on one. So I knew Instagram, where I had more subscribers there. I could en enlist help. They were giving me advice. Some people gave me some suggestions, some of which I did. I did a Twitter campaign on Twitter where I had everyone who had a Twitter account tweet Team YouTube, at Team YouTube, to get their attention. And if there was enough noise, eventually they would respond. And they did. Thank you, everyone who did that. They were um, uh, instrumental in, in helping me gain my channel back and making me feel like I was actually talking to a person. So that was one thing that I did. Hundreds and hundreds of people did it over. And they're continuing to um, touch base with me and keep in contact with me. And then I continued communicating with creator support on email back and forth. Um, someone suggested that I write in Reddit. There's a, 
like a YouTube group and Reddit. I had never Reddited before. I don't know anything. Like that's way too cool for me. But I got in there, I Reddited, explained my situation, linked my blog post. I wrote this long blog post called The Death of Mr. Domestic that I asked everyone to, it was Mr. Domestic YouTube, I asked everyone to forward on social media, include in their newsletters, include in their blogs, just get the word out. I think like, I don't know, 50,000 people have seen that blog by now. And I just kept at it. And then some other people had forwarded my blog post to some media outlets. I think I'm going to still continue because I want people to learn from this. But I was using everything that I could. My next step after this was I was going to contact a, what's it called? I can't think of the name. Intellectual property lawyer. They have intellectual property attorneys. I was trying to not to spend more money since I was already losing a lot. Um, but that was the next step because this is your intellectual property. Yes, folks, I didn't back up any of my videos. So that was part of my desperation for needing it. it was, I wanted my content back and then I knew that they had it on a server somewhere. So I kept pushing. And then eventually, once I did all of that, I got a message from um, creator support on email saying that they had looked again and that they had discovered that my account was in fact hacked. And they gave me some information on how to set up a brand account and that they would um, transfer my, my old account to, to this brand account, which they have since done. But this was kind of funny to me. Whenever they transferred my account back to me, it was suspended because as all that fake information was being sent out, people were reporting it. I have a copyright strike on there, which I didn't have before. I'm hoping they'll remove it. But um, my, my channel does not look the same as it did before. There's like 30 different videos and I'll screenshot so you can see what I was talking about with the premieres that they were sending out. These were still in, they were removed, I think from YouTube or from the people who stole my account, not sure. Um, but this was part of it. I want those removed. My URL is different. It's not back to how it was. I lost like a thousand subscribers. Hopefully I'll get them back. Um, but that's the least of what's important to me. It's like I got my content back finally. I'm hoping the story can help a bunch of people. It was a lot more work than it should have been, especially for um, a site that makes money off of content creators, creating content for them that can then be monetized through advertisers. I know that YouTube makes a lot more money. Folks, YouTubers don't make money off of advertising. Like it, it doesn't even make me break even. On most videos, I lose money. That's not why I do it. I do it because I love it. Um, and it's fun and I like helping people and there are other ways that I can make money with Mr. Domestic. But whenever you watch an ad, it doesn't really make, it's like a fraction of a fraction of a cent. So um, not saying this for like, ah, but like we don't make a lot of money. So people who are content creators and have the passion for it, it's there for a different reason. I created a community of safety and joy and happiness for everyone. And I'm very anti-political, anti like anything but joy and positivity. And that's what I, I force um, in my communities is that I don't tolerate any negativity. So for my channel to then be used for everything that I'm against, that's what broke my heart. And I wanted to find a way to create a safe space for everyone. So my YouTube channel, um, it's back. I think you can watch all my videos now. They're going to be a lot of changes because as I said before, for y'all, this is a happy, happy, raw, raw celebration. I'm not there yet. I was violated. Like I've been physically violated, sexually violated. I'm open about it. This probably was worse than that because I never got a time to grieve. I was getting like dozens of emails a day from people being upset about my videos not working or asking me to do something else or people not being sensitive to the fact that this is pretty much a catastrophe free for me. So it's like every day I was being re-traumatized. I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but this was a month long catastrophic ordeal at a scale I never envisioned for me being a, a happy, joyful dude who likes to make stuff and inspire other people to find joy and make stuff too. Like this just boggles my mind. So I need time to process it. I need time to think about how my content is going to change here in the future. What else I'm going to do with Mr. Domestic and how, most importantly, I'm going to be able to create that safe space for everyone that I promised. Um, I'm pretty, uh, 
not disappointed in myself. I'm not beating myself up up over it, but like 30 seconds of me not thinking created this. So I just need to be on, on guard, make sure that I'm conscious and that my energy is going in the right place. So that is my story of how I lost my YouTube channel and how I got it back. And I was fished, hacked, hijacked, terminated, suspended, all of it. And then I had to fight to get it back and it was hard and it took a lot out of me, but just know those of you who are, are watching this, hopefully I've given y'all some tips and some tricks that you can try if you've lost your channel to get it back because there's no one, regardless of how many subscribers you have, whenever you create a YouTube channel and put content out there, like you shouldn't lose that, right? They shouldn't have been able to bypass the two-factor verification like they did on my account. There are things that YouTube need to do and I'm grateful for this platform, but, um, I still need time to process, so hopefully y'all will be patient with me. I'm not sure when I'm going to start putting out regular content again, but I just wanted to get this video out to get everyone caught up to speed, know what's going on, and tell y'all to enjoy all of my videos right now that are on my YouTube channel until I make some changes in the future. So keep it positive, y'all. Mr. Domestic out.